Located in the southeastern corner of Indiana, Versailles is the seat of government for Ripley County. With a population of around 2,000, this community is like many small county seats with a skyline that's easy to overlook. But one church steeple, just a block west of the town square, makes the skyline of Versailles unique. This cross is the apex of what is referred to as the Tyson Temple. Well, it's Art Deco. It's one of a kind. Well, people come here and they see it. They're awestruck by the structure and the, just the design of it, the way it's been preserved over the years. It's just a very unique building. In the late 1800s, Versailles' native son, James Tyson, was living in a boarding house in Chicago, where he met and befriended Charles Walgreen. Walgreen at the time owned just one drugstore, but soon came to Tyson with a proposal. He said he'd like to buy a second store, but he was short $1,500. So he says to his friend, Mr. Tyson, he says, man, I'd like to open that second door. And of course, Mr. Tyson had an extra $1,500. So he loaned him the $1,500, and uh, that was the start of Walgreens, so to speak, in terms of additional stores and chaining. By 1917, Walgreens had multiple stores, and Tyson had become the secretary treasurer of Walgreens Incorporated. Walgreens went public in 1928, and of course, him being an integral part of the company and a friend of Mr. Walgreens, he was entitled to a large number of shares at the initial public offering, but he never forgot his hometown. In 1930, he decided to create an endowment and he donated 18,000 shares to that fund for the benefit of the citizens of the Versailles. And he had some ideas as what he wanted to do going forward. And one of those was to memorialize or commemorate the life of his mother, Eliza Adams Tyson. And he asked his good friend, James High, which he grew up with here in Versailles, how that would best be served. And James Hyatt recommended that he uh, build a church. In 1936, the cornerstone was laid. Then the next year, May 16th, the church was dedicated. I think there was a lot of excitement about the church going up. I understand that there was just thousands of people here. Tyson was there. And he presented the church to the Board of Trustees. I think the church itself was the main draw. I don't think people that it's ever seen around here had ever seen a church or a building like this. When the church opened, there were only 500 people in the town of Versailles, but 5,000 people attended that uh, initial celebration and opening. And then in the next three years, 27,000 uh, signed the register out here. So it was quite an event. Despite their folded and faded appearance, the original architectural drawings display intriguing details of the structure's Art Deco style. A close inspection reveals that the church is 90 feet from the front steps to the rear. The width measures 41 feet and five inches across, with the building interior height coming in at 32 feet from the auditorium floor to the apex of the roof. To get the overall exterior height of the structure, the dimensions of the unusual steeple need to be included. From the spire, it's an inverted cone and it's a aluminum and stainless steel. And there's a six foot aluminum cross at the top. From the top of that cross to ground level, it's 100 feet. And the spire itself is 65 feet. And that spire incidentally cost $35,000 to construct. The exterior finish of the church utilizes an unusual material to give the building its polished look. It's that uh, glazed terracotta brick, primarily. Now the downspouts and the guttering is all copper, but it's uh, gilded with lead, if you will. The church was designed to be built without structural wood. Mr. Tyson had visited the temple in Jerusalem and he got the idea that he liked to do it without wood or nails. That's why it was called the temple, supposedly. It's like Jerusalem's Hebrew or Jewish temple. It's concrete and masonry. If you can build it out of masonry, it'll last a lot longer than wood, so it's more structurally sound. 
The interior ceiling is adorned with gold and silver stars. The location of each star is significant. The 250 silver stars and the one gold star were all hand hammered and imported from Germany. And they're in the form of the night sky the night Eliza Adams Tyson died. And that gold star is in the position of the North Star. The windows are interesting because they're all imported from England. Uh, they're stained glass, leaded windows, and they're grouted with zinc. Originally, the church was built in 1937 for $150,000, which was a lot of money back then. In addition to all the architectural technique on display, there are also many examples of religious symbolism found in the church. The gold leaves that go horizontal, and it represents the streets that are gold of heaven. The scallops running vertically are representative or symbolic of the parchment or scrolls that were used to write most of the Old Testament and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The arch itself is representative of the rainbow after the flood that Noah saw. And the three rings up at the top on each column are representative of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The flame represents uh, Pentecost. The apostles were on fire and had passion to spread the word. Those uh, recessed handrails that you come up, those are an influence from uh, Reims, France, where he visited a cathedral and he saw those and it struck a chord with him and he thought, uh -huh. must have made a mental note to I'm going to use those. As each Sunday marked the passage of time, it became increasingly expensive to maintain the unique look of the church. Over the years, they've had to re-brick the two sides and the front, and the copper roof was, was replaced back in the 80s. And it was uh, 250000 to repaint and refurbish the inside. You used to have glass block windows in the front. They were a maintenance nightmare. Since it's been built in 1937, we've put between $1.5 and $2 million back into it. Any replace or repair comes out of the Tyson Fund, which is a godsend because we, we couldn't keep it up. Even though it's now been over 80 years since the temple first appeared on the Versailles skyline, it still manages to attract onlookers. They schedule tours. And a lot of times I'm out there doing something, or they drive by, and then they drive by again. And sometimes they'll stop and ask a question. And it's captivating from a visual perspective. I've been here working on things, and people will walk up and want to just tour the, and I'll stop what I'm doing and walk through it, let them look. And, their eyes are wide open coming in here. They're, they just look around like, well, how did this happen? Sometimes they don't talk too much. Sure, you're visually awestruck, but there is a feeling. Of, I don't know what it is, magnificence, uh, power, testimonial. It was almost as if the structure itself was witnessing. This is where I grew up. This is, this is my church. When I was young, I didn't appreciate all the symbolism and the beauty of the church. It's on the National Registry. I want to always be on it because I think it's a really special place and I think it should be on it. When I come through the front doors, I'm with God. I feel His presence, you know. And uh, I think everybody does. If it can touch one heart or one soul through all these tours and these different things, and people become closer to God, then in my opinion, it served its purpose.